Freedom, it's a word we throw around a lot, but what does it actually mean? It's about more than just doing whatever you want. It's about the right to speak your mind, to challenge authority, to live without fear. But freedom is fragile, it needs to be protected because there are always those who would take it away. Think about it, history is full of stories about people who lost their freedoms. They were silenced, controlled, oppressed, and it always started small. A little censorship here, a little surveillance there, until one day it was too late. We need to be vigilant. We need to recognize the signs because the fight for freedom is never truly over. Ever feel like you're being lied to? You probably are. Propaganda is everywhere. Uh, it's the art of manipulating information to control what you think. Totalitarian regimes, they've got it down to a science. They flood the airwaves with their version of the truth. Repeated enough times, people start to believe it. Dissent, crushed. Alternative viewpoints, silenced. It's about creating a narrative, a single story, and making sure nobody questions it. Think about the news you consume, the social media feeds you scroll through, who's controlling what you see, who's deciding what you should think. These are questions we need to ask ourselves constantly. Remember that creepy feeling of being watched? It's not paranoia. In the digital age, surveillance is everywhere. Governments and corporations are collecting your data, tracking your every move, and it's all done in the name of security, or so they say. Think about it. Facial recognition software, phone tapping, internet monitoring, every click, every like, every email is being recorded. This data can be used to control you, to manipulate you, to silence you. Privacy is not a luxury. It's a fundamental human right. It's the foundation of a free society. Once it's gone, it's gone for good. In a free society, dissent is a right. It's how we hold power accountable how we challenge the status quo, but totalitarian regimes, they can't handle dissent. They see it as a threat and they use every tool at their disposal to silence it. Censorship is just the beginning. They shut down newspapers, block websites, control the narrative, but it doesn't stop there. Critics of the regime are intimidated, harassed, imprisoned. Some even disappear, vanished, erased. Remember, the opposite of courage is not cowardice, it's conformity. When we allow dissent to be silenced, we all suffer. Section 5. Education or Indoctrination. Moulding young minds. Education is supposed to be about critical thinking, about questioning everything, about learning to think for yourself. But in the wrong hands, education becomes indoctrination, a tool to control the minds of the next generation. Totalitarian regimes understand this. They rewrite history books, control the curriculum, fill young minds with propaganda. They want to create a generation that obeys without question, a generation that conforms, a generation that doesn't know how to think for itself. We need to be vigilant. We need to protect our education systems from those who would use them for their own ends, because our children deserve better. Section 6, ruling through fear, violence and intimidation. Fear is the oldest trick in the book and totalitarian regimes are masters of it. They use violence and intimidation to keep the population in line, to crush any form of resistance. They create a climate of fear where people are afraid to speak out, afraid to challenge the regime, afraid to even think for themselves. This fear becomes a self-perpetuating cycle, paralyzing the population, making them complicit in their own oppression. Remember, courage is not the absence of fear, it's acting in spite of it. When we allow fear to control us, we give away our power. Section 7. Economic shackles control through dependency, money talks, or in this case, it silences. Totalitarian regimes use economic control to maintain their grip on power. They control the flow of money. They decide who prospers and who suffers. Want to speak out against the regime? Good luck getting a job. Want to start a business that challenges the status quo? Not a chance. They make the population economically dependent on the regime, trapping them in a cycle of obedience. Economic freedom is essential for a free society. When people are economically dependent, they are not truly free. Section 8, the corporate media complex manufacturing consent 2.0. Think the media is here to tell you the truth? Think again. The corporate media is often complicit in maintaining the status quo. They serve the interests of their corporate overlords. And those interests don't always align with yours. 
They bombard you with a constant stream of distractions, celebrity, gossip, reality TV, anything to keep you from paying attention to what's really going on. They manufacture consent. They tell you what to think, what to believe, what to buy. We need to be critical consumers of information, question everything, seek out alternative viewpoints. Don't let the corporate media think for you. Section 9, Government Overreach. When protectors become oppressors, we elect governments to protect our freedoms. But what happens when they become the oppressors? When they use their power to control us, to silence us, to take away our freedoms, it's a slippery slope. One minute they're telling you it's for your own safety. The next minute they're reading your emails, tracking your every move, silencing anyone who disagrees with them. We need to hold our elected officials accountable. We need to make sure they're working for us, not the other way around. Section 10. Echoes of authoritarianism recognizing the warning signs. It's easy to think that it could never happen here, that we're somehow immune to the dangers of authoritarianism, but history teaches us otherwise. It can happen anywhere at any time. The warning signs are always the same. The demonization of the other, the erosion of civil liberties, the rise of nationalism, the suppression of dissent, the control of the media, the concentration of power, these are the signs we need to be vigilant about. We need to learn from the mistakes of the past. We need to be vigilant in protecting our freedoms, because once they're gone, they're not easily regained. Section 11, safeguarding liberty, a call to action. So what can we do? How do we protect our freedoms in this day and age? It starts with each and every one of us. We need to be informed, we need to be engaged, we need to be vigilant. We need to speak out against injustice. We need to hold our leaders accountable. We need to support organizations that are fighting for our freedoms. And most importantly, we need to vote. The fight for freedom is a marathon, not a sprint. It's a fight that each generation must wage anew, but it's a fight worth fighting because the alternative is unacceptable. Thank you.